Found everywhere you can listen to podcasts. It's Caffeinated and Confused with Hannah. That's a very confusing time for any young lady. Well, hello. Happy end of 2023. I have been saying for months now, I've been teasing. I've been saying, I got to bring the podcast back. But if we're going to be totally honest, it just seemed very daunting. Because my whole idea is that... I want to have people on every week. Like, I don't want to just be sitting here talking to myself every single week. So I've been trying to figure out how we're going to make this work. And we're going to uh, we're going to try to have at least one person every single week come and uh, join me on the podcast. New and improved, caffeinated and confused. I'm still caffeinated. I'm still confused. Honestly, I think I might be more confused than I have ever been. So this really works out. But anyway, thank you for caring about the podcast. Thank you for messaging me and saying that you want to uh, bring it back because, you know, a lot of life has been lived in the last two years, I think. I honestly, when was the last time I made a podcast? I feel like the last time I did a podcast was about... The Atlanta Bumble guy, right? I want to say that was the last podcast that I uh, gave to you. So a lot of life has happened since then. I've had multiple people be like, oh, Hannah, you need to do like your 2023 dating recap with all of the craziness that has ensued in my dating life. And we're going to do like a, a kind of a recap, I guess. Like, I guess I do need to keep you updated with certain nicknames of men that you might hear in the conversations that I'll be having with friends because I'm sure situations will come up about certain men that I have dated and whatever in the last year and a half, two years. So we will talk about, I guess, I don't know, my dating recap. I don't even know where we left off. Like, I know we talked about Atlanta Bumble Guy, which was more of a joke. That story was just wild. But I don't know. I don't think we talked about anyone that I went out with last year. So we'll get to that. I do want to, I guess, recap my 2023, which was a crazy year. I don't know if I've ever had this busy of a year in my life. And I I know that you can see that if you follow me on social media, the amount of people who ask me if I ever sleep. I'm like, no, not really. But I have FOMO. So it's like I could sleep, but then I'm just going to be stressed out about all the fun I'm missing out on. So 2023 was a good year. I mean, a lot of highs and lows, not too many lows. I guess the lows were more my own issues, which we'll talk about issues that I feel like a lot of girls and probably guys go through and you know kind of having to get yourself out of it but it was a great year I made a lot of great new friends Uh, it was the year of book club which I know that my book club we've been meeting for I feel like it's going to be almost two years but I feel like this year it was just it's a just a really great group of girls I'm sure they're all listening right now hi book club and it's just been really great to have new friends to have you know a girls night once a month just to get together and laugh and it's just been a lot of fun so I'm sure you've seen a lot of our shenanigans on social media my favorite probably being Halloween when we decided to all dress up like each other so we like all picked names and we had to show up to book club it was a surprise whose name we chose and we had to show up dressed like them. I have a really funny TikTok on it on my TikTok account, so you can go and check that out. But it's been really fun getting to get together with the girlies every single month and have fun. What else this year? Man, it was, I have to like go back on my Instagram to see what even happened. Ooh, Kelsey Ballerini, that was fun. Me and my, uh, one of my best friends, Laura, took a trip to Milwaukee to see Kelsey Ballerini at the rave. We got to hang out with her before the show. And this was right when her and Chase Stokes started dating they were public but we were like freaking out because he was there we were backstage with her hanging out and he was there and we got to talk to him like she brought him up and we were all just hanging out shooting the shit pretty much and Laura and I were like oh my god we want to ask for a photo so bad like it's John B the new season I think had just come out so we're like but then we wanted to play it cool so we're like okay we can't like we can't ask for a picture we have to play it cool and now we every single week are like why didn't we ask for a picture but we lived in the moment it was fun but that was a really fun night Uh, minus the fact that I had the stomach flu for the first time in I mean my adult life like I don't think I've had the flu since I was a kid. So I was down bad for three days. I was also going through not a breakup, I guess like a situationship breakup. 
I don't even know. It was a weird week of my life rolling into that Kelsey Ballerini show. So I feel like it came at kind of the perfect time. That was a lot of fun. I took a trip to Nashville in April. Was that April? Was that May? I think it was April. I forced one of my really good friends, Trey, to come with me. He was, I booked the trip by myself. I was just going to head there by myself, but it was his 30th birthday. So like two days before I was supposed to leave, I forced him to book a flight with me. And um, so we spent like three days in Nashville. I also had like not my proudest moment in Nashville. And I can laugh about it now because it is funny. I mean, I am 34 years old and I threw up on a street corner, which is pretty wild. So Trey and I... I got to town uh, we left at like the crack of dawn on a Monday we got to Nashville we dropped our stuff off at uh, my friend Juliana's house shout out Juliana she hosted us for the couple days that we were there and she had work stuff to do so we're like oh we'll just hit Broadway you know we'll just wander around we are in our sweats quite literally we're in the clothes that we wore on the airplane and we're like whatever we'll just bar hop and bar hop we did I don't know what kind of drinks we were drinking but we were on Broadway I think we had Juliana pick us up at like 4 30 and then we went and changed which I was just talking to Trey about this the other day I'm like I don't even know how I got ready and I looked pretty decent that night we went out I don't know how I got ready after drinking all day so then I mean we went to dinner and then we went out out ran into Matt Stell at one of the bars which is funny because I was going to see him again a couple days later when he came for for our St. Jude jam so of course I'm like nine hours into drinking and I see him across the bar and I start shouting at him we have a rapport like we've hung out before so he knew who I was but that was kind of funny but anyway so then we continued we stayed out all night I think we went to bed at two in the morning probably later than that and I had a work meeting the next day because I at the time was doing a show in Nashville and I had never met the staff like I had never met the other people that I was on air with so I reached out to my boss at the time there and I was like hey I'm gonna be in town would love to see you guys and it just so happened that they had like a promo meeting at noon on Tuesday so they invited me to come and then we were getting lunch so drank all day the day before woke up Tuesday and had to pull myself together when I tell you I was a zombie walking through Juliana's apartment trying to get my life together Trey cracks open a white claw at I don't even know 11 a.m and I almost threw up he's yelling at me to pull it together so I'm trying really hard and then I'm like I'm gonna throw up I couldn't so I got dressed got it together Juliana was driving us to the station we're about a block away and I look at her I was like can you is there a gas station nearby She was like no why what do you need I'm like I don't need anything I need to literally throw up I'm about to die so she pulls over next to some random train track and I just lost it uh, it was not it was not my proudest moment, but it was so funny because I had mascara dripping down my face and I quite literally had to go meet a bunch of people who I've never met before. And any other normal person probably would have tried to hide it. I didn't. I walked right in the door. I sat down in that meeting and I was like, I just need everyone to know I just puked outside. So just nice to meet you. I'm Hannah. This is me. And then I uh, had a good meeting. We went to lunch at the Soho House, which is bougie. Uh, my boss there had like a membership. You need a membership to get in. You're not allowed to have your phone out because it's where all the celebrities go and they don't want their pictures taken and stuff. So you're not allowed to have your phone out. I didn't even want to have mine on the table. I was freaking out. I didn't even want to respond to a text because I was so scared. And then Be Real went off while we were there and I did sneak a Be Real, but I didn't see any celebrities, but it was a really cool spot. Had a Bloody Mary and then I was back on the wagon and then we had ourselves the time went to Breland's show which was so cool I love Breland he spent some time here last year he did the anthem for a Packer game and we went out I took him out the night before when I was supposed to have him home early because he had to sing the national anthem in front of tens of thousands of people at noon the next day and we had him out until 2 30 in the morning so we had ourselves some fun so he was doing a charity show in Nashville that's kind of why I went there I was like oh I want to go check out Breland's show it was really cool he had like Keith Urban, Sam Hunt, Tyler Hubbard. I mean, it was a stacked lineup. Nate Smith, ex-ambassadors. So we went to that hours after I puked in a ditch. We were at Breland's show at the Ryman, which I've never been there before. And then he had a party after like a private party thing after the show where a lot of the artists who played came none of like the big ones but it was still really cool so we got to see him for a little bit and then have some fun and then I just couldn't do it anymore I think the clock hit midnight and I turned into a pumpkin I forced Trey and Juliana to leave because I was not 
doing okay. Trey likes to say that I forced him to leave, but I looked at him at one point and he looked back at me just as tired and he said, do you want to go? And I said, yeah. And he said, oh, thank God, because I want to go too. So he tries to act like I'm the one who pulled him out, but really he wanted to go to. So overall, I mean, we were only in Nashville. We flew in Monday and we flew out Wednesday late afternoon. So it was a very quick trip, but it was so much fun. I mean, I could talk about, I could do a full podcast about it and maybe I will. Maybe I'll have Trey as one of my guests, but that was definitely a highlight of the year. Went from Nashville to Milwaukee for Morgan Wallen, St. Jude Jam, Then I went to Chicago. Literally, April was the craziest month. I think I was gone every single weekend. Was in Chicago for Laura's 30th birthday. That drive home was not fun, but April was a good month. May, I had a lot of weddings. Memorial weekend, I went to two weddings back to back, one in Door County for uh, my friends Dana and Charlie. It was probably the most beautiful wedding I've ever been to. Shout out Dana for planning that. And Charlie, I don't think you helped, but it was absolutely beautiful. And then Brooke, my book club girly, she got married in Green Bay the next day. And that was a beautiful wedding as well. It was so much fun. A lot of weddings. A lot of people are like, do you ever not go to a wedding? I'm like, listen, listen, Linda, I love me a wedding. What else? This summer, I went to, I had my birthday then. A couple weeks later, I spent my birthday up north with all of um, my friends. We went to my friend's cabin. We golfed. We drank. We had a blast. And then my birthday was actually on Sunday. So then we did a Sunday fun day with all the book club girls, which was really fun. We had a lot of great concerts this summer. A lot of great shows like in Green Bay. Obviously, I went to Taylor Swift. Are you kidding me? That was like the highlight of my year. Went to her show in Minnesota with my best friend Ange I cried literally it was like I mean we were in the worst seats I think in the whole place we were like 10 rows from the top but it was one of the most magical nights of my life it was so much fun that was also a crazy weekend I had Eric Church in Milwaukee on Thursday Friday morning got up drove to Minneapolis got dinner with some of my high school friends Friday night started throwing up Don't know what happened. I don't know what it was with my stomach flu this year, but got super sick that Friday night. And I was like, I swear to God, if I'm sick for Taylor Swift, I will riot. But I pulled through, had a blast. So I did Eric Church Thursday, Taylor Swift Saturday. um, And then the next weekend was 4th of July. When I told you I, I didn't sleep, I'm not kidding. So 4th of July, Door County, then went to back to Milwaukee for Zach Bryan which was one of the best shows I've ever seen. Um, It's just, yeah, it was a very busy summer. Spent a lot of weekends up north with friends, went to Door County a couple times, and then it was football season. So we've gone to every home Packer game, had a blast, went to Scottsdale in October for Laura's bachelorette party. Oh, that was, I mean, a time. We had so much fun. It was like 100 something degrees every single day. We just laid by the pool. It was a lot of fun with just like the best group of girls. We had an Airbnb where the whole backyard was like paintings of the weekend, Taylor Swift, Beyonce. That house is like a basic bees dream come true. Seriously, every wall was a mural. If you are going to Scottsdale for any kind of bachelorette party, message me and I will send you the link because it was amazing. So yeah. And then Laura's wedding, obviously in November, that was such a blast. It was such a perfect weekend. It was so much fun. And yeah, now here we are. Went from that into Friendsgiving, done a lot of holiday activities, but this year was definitely busy, but it was a lot of fun. I made a lot of core memories with a lot of amazing people. I really truly am so lucky to have the people in my life that I do I have the best friends they're so much fun but they're also like a group of people that you can just lay on a couch with or have game nights with or just like call them crying and they'll help you so just a really good year with good people so that's kind of I guess my 2023 recap yeah that that was my 2023 kind of in a nutshell as far as just life goes like my social life different events and places I traveled and stuff I did I mean obviously there's a lot more that happened but I'm gonna have different friends and people on the podcast over the weeks and I'm sure that we'll get more into it so I don't want to bore you with every little detail I told enough stories and I know I mean I did a poll on my Instagram yesterday or I did one of those question boxes that said what do you want to hear about on the first podcast back 
back. And quite literally 96% of you said my dating life. So I know that is why majority of you are here because you enjoy hearing my stories. And I know that it's because everyone is going through the same stuff. I mean, a lot of single girlies that are listening to this podcast are going through the, the exact same thing. I mean, a lot of my single friends are going through the exact same things that I've gone through. So I know that that's why you enjoy hearing about it. I hate talking about it at least when I'm by myself because I just feel I don't know I feel weird talking about it I feel I don't know I just think it seems odd that I'm in a room by myself and I'm about to blast all these guys that I've dated in the last year and a half and guys I know I'm I'm for sure posting to my story at least that this podcast is out and I a lot of these men that I have dated or seen or gone out with or whatever rendezvoused with will probably click on it if they see it and they probably just heard me say I'm gonna blast these guys and now they're literally pissing their pants I'm not going to actually blast you like I come up with nicknames if you are an OG podcast listener you know every guy I go out with gets a nickname because I don't ever want their identity to be figured out I accidentally do I don't know if you guys remember this maybe you will back in the Instagram dad days when I um accidentally said his real name and I had probably like five or six girls message me on Instagram finding like they had found him on Instagram just because I accidentally said his first name luckily at that time I mean it wasn't anything bad and the girls were like "Ooh, girl good for you after they had found who he was so that is why I'm trying I am protecting the identity of these men mostly because you know they've done me wrong so I guess I shouldn't protect them but I will because I do want to find a husband one day and I feel like if I'm on a podcast blasting every man I've had a thing with uh, my chances of finding Prince Charming will definitely dwindle and they're already very dwindled let me tell you so mostly what I'm trying to say here is that the point of this episode is not to like be a petty girl and blast any man who has done me wrong the point is because I am gonna be having people close to my life on the podcast later on and I'm sure different stories will come up about these nicknames and you're gonna be like who in the heck is that so basically this is just a way for you to know who the nicknames are and to get a recap on how much of a mess my dating life has been the last year and a half you really haven't heard much of anything and there's been a lot going on everyone you know I, there's like a TikTok trend right now where you do a dating recap and it shows where you met the guys you went what it, what you did I really am gonna be transparent with you and say that I did not go crazy and go on dates with a bunch of different guys in the year 2023 2022 absolutely I did that I went on more dates there was one week in 2022 that I went on three dates with three different men in like a five-day span and when I tell you I was exhausted after that week so 2022 was like I'm throwing everything in the kitchen sink I think that's a saying and we're just gonna we're just gonna go for it and then mid 2023 I realized I need a break. So I deleted all dating apps after a situation ended with a man, which we'll get to his nickname, whatever. And I was very bummed by it. Like I was very thrown off by what transpired and what happened. And I think my guards went way up. They had come down a little bit and then they went right back up. So I deleted all dating apps and I've gone out, I think since that situation, which was like July, it ended I had I maybe have gone on like four dates I mean I've had different people reach out and hook me up with people or set me up I guess I, I should say with other people and obviously it hasn't worked I had good times but I just needed a break from I, I feel like every girl will get this when you're going through a cycle where you're constantly talking to someone and then you almost get validation throughout the day from like how is that person acting with me have, have they texted me yet today and then you get the anxiety of if they haven't texted you and that has just been my life for the last couple of years and it was just kind of exhausting and I was having a really good year in all other aspects. I mean, I just told you about all of the fun, awesome stuff that I did and all of the people that I was surrounded by. And I'm like, why am I letting, if I'm talking to a man or if a guy likes me back, determine how I feel as a human? And it was a, it was a light bulb moment for me because I'm definitely, I mean, I feel like all of my friends, my guy friends have said this to me too when I've asked them for advice that I come off as a very confident person and I come off as someone who 
I don't know, I guess like isn't doesn't feel bad about themselves. But I definitely let things get me to that point. And I like was definitely letting men and dating and situations determine if I was good enough as a human, which is so crappy, so dumb. I know a lot of anyone, man, woman has definitely gone through that, but I kind of felt like I hit a breaking point with it. And I just wanted to focus on me and focus on all of the great stuff that was going on and focus on the good rather than like, you know, why did another relationship or whatever and you know why didn't they think I was good enough it's like well I don't know if that's actually the case I definitely think I'm good enough I think I have a you know I will make someone very happy one day I guess that just wasn't these weren't the right situations for me but you know what I'm saying like it's very easy to get down on yourself and I was just sick of letting that kind of determine my mood that month so it has been a very freeing five months I guess it's been since I kind of stopped I don't want to say putting myself out there when I'm t when I explain this to people in my life I'm like I'm not not putting myself out there like I'm not saying no if an opportunity arises like if someone wants to set me up with someone like I'll say I'll give it a shot I'm not being like no I cannot but I'm just not out seeking it right now which is totally okay with me 2024 we'll get back in the game but it has been very nice to just not let my anxious attachment style take over my life. It's been so great. So that is kind of the recap of like my mindset with dating right now. And I do, I've given this advice to other girls who have been going through the same things that I have been going through. I know it's really hard when you want to find that person and you like don't want to just stop or you don't want to delete the apps and whatever. I did that for years. Trust me when I say it feels very good. Okay. It takes a minute to like get used to not getting that validation or having a guy who's texting you it takes you a minute to get past that but once you do man it's so nice you sleep better it's just it's great so I highly recommend it but anyway okay we will get to some of the nicknames of some of these men and I'll tell you some stories that I'm sure a lot of girls can relate to because dating in 2023 soon to be 2024 it's truly I mean, the worst, like I, it, it's bad. So I don't have all the time in the world to tell you about every date that I went on last year. So I will just focus on, I guess, like key nicknames that you might hear throughout the episodes. I should have made one of those templates where you can like keep track. I'm really not going to give you too many, I guess, just key things. And some of them I'll bring up just because cute dates that I went on. Um, there are a couple of those. And yeah, so men listening who have done me wrong or who I've had any kind of romantical situation with don't get your panties in a wad I'm not going to call you by name I am going to say my honest feelings and my honest opinions about what might have happened but I'm not going to make your life a living hell although there have been days when I've wanted to but I won't because I'm growing you know we're we're evolving in the year 2024 so we left off I think the last date date that I went on we're not talking Atlanta Bumble guy because that didn't count um was Air Force man that was the hinterland guy I want to say that's where we ended off anyway I haven't talked to him since he went back to Germany hope he's doing well he was a he has a local family I forget what it's like a very little town that he is from it was like 40 minutes away and I, I can't remember but that was an amazing date I think I've already talked on it about it. We went to dinner at Hinterland and we were the last people there. They had to like kick us out and it was right before Thanksgiving. So they had all of the Christmas lights up and the Titletown area. So we walked around to a little smoochy smooch under all the Christmas lights. Truly a dream. It was a Hallmark movie. And he was, I got to say, he was probably the most attractive man that I've ever gone out with. Like he was a hottie. So shout out to Air Force guy, wherever you might be. He's not listening to this because he doesn't have social media. Probably forgets that I even exist. That's fine. It was a long time. It was over two years ago. I think that was like Thanksgiving of, was that? Or was that Thanksgiving last year? I honestly can't even remember. Oh no, that was Thanksgiving last year. Okay. Anyway, Air Force guy, hope you're doing good. So then we had the holidays. Then we went to Atlanta. I think that was in February. And then I came home and I'm like, all right, well, let's give the dating apps another whirl. Let's see what's out there. And I think one of the first dates I went on after my last podcast was one of my favorite dates that I have gone on because it was just very like organic. So I matched with this guy on, I want to say Hinge, one of the dating apps. And and we call him Suit Guy. 
that was his nickname with my friends and I. And he was a local guy. We actually went to the same high school. I feel like I'm giving away too much information, but probably not. Uh, We went to the same high school. He was younger than me. I don't think we were in high school at the same time. But we talked for, also keep in mind, I'm this is a squirrel moment but he we talked for probably two days like we exchanged numbers right away we only talked for maybe a day or two when he asked me out which I think is that is the way to go don't be stringing these girls along like I'm not trying to be someone's pen pal I hate when someone just that's all they do is just text you or snapchat you it's like are we gonna go out or what is the deal so that was number one green flag with um suit guy is that he asked me out right away and I want to say he asked me out for like that day it wasn't oh you know are you available a week from now I think I was at work we were texting and he was like what are you doing for dinner tonight let's get dinner and so we did and we went and got sushi which is my favorite we all know I love sushi and we had been talking about which it was good like conversation was great wasn't awkward had good food had a couple drinks and we had been talking about golf and how we both needed new golf shoes for the upcoming golf season. So then dinner is wrapping up and he's like, well, what do you like? Do you want to go shopping? You want to go to Target or wherever? Or I think we went to Dick's. He's like, do you want to see? I mean, I think they're still open for another 20 minutes. We can go see if we can find golf shoes. And I was like, little things, you know, it was just very normal. It was something that normal, I guess, couple, we were in a couple, it was our first date, but it was just something that I'm like, oh, you know, doing mundane things with someone I think is really cute. So we went shopping, we went to like Dick's and Target, and then he dropped me back off in my car, had a nice little, I'm, I guess I'm a first date smoocher. I should probably, maybe that's my problem. Maybe I'm kissing these guys too soon. But anyway, so that was a very cute first date. And then our second date, we went grocery shopping he picked me up we went grocery shopping and then we made dinner at my place and then watched a movie and that was um super fun then I saw him like he was golfing at the same time I was a couple days later and so then we met up at the golf course and everything was going like swimmingly I mean, we saw each other three times in the first week and a half or something like that. And then we were trying to make plans to get together again. And I notice I'm like, my anxious attachment style starts going off. Like the dinger starts going off. I'm like, ding, ding, ding. Something feels different. Am I being crazy or is this really happening? And I was right out of nowhere after work one day. Keep in mind, he texted me good morning that morning. We were talking all day. Everything was normal. And... That night I came home from work and he sends me a novel. And you know, when you see, I don't even know how the text started, but you know, when you just know, you see the beginning of the text and you just know it's going to be that one. So my heart, you know, dropped to my butthole and it was basically the classic. I mean, the amount of times I've gotten this text now is comical where it was, um, you know, I've been thinking and you are, I think he told me that I was the best girl he's ever gone on a, like gone out with he was like you're the most amazing like best person I've ever gone out with like you are truly amazing like in every way and blah 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 and he's like but I just don't I need to figure out if I'm ready for a relationship <laughs> like it's so comical at this point like I can't help but just laugh it is ridiculous but he went on this whole thing whatever and I I don't think I was like mean back but I wasn't super friendly I was just like well what the hell like this is confusing whatever and for some reason that one that one and another one really like kind of gutted me a little bit because I I had no indication no reason to think that that was going to happen you know and granted it had only been like two weeks it wasn't even a long time but it still was just kind of like hmm what in the world so that happened and then I want to say we didn't talk for a couple days and then I think I went to a concert that weekend and then he started snapchatting me so then he was like sending me pictures and stuff of like his weekend and then I was just really confused and we kind of I guess talked back and forth not seriously for a couple days and then just stopped then I had an inkling that he ended things with me because he met another girl which is something that happened to me again this year so we'll get into that um but turns out I was right and he's now engaged to her so I guess you're welcome for being your burnt pancake I think that's I'm gonna start calling myself the burnt pancake if you haven't heard that it's like when a dude gets out of a relationship and you're like the first person they date after and you're basically like the rebound and then the person after you is like their fluffy perfect pancake and the one that they stay with so I guess just call me 
burnt pancakes. So happy for him. Truly. I mean, he was a really, really, really good guy. I think that's why I was so bummed about it because he was just like a really genuine dude and we had a good time. Um, But I do in hindsight now, as most of life, you figure out in hindsight that I I don't think we would have like been the perfect match. You know, I mean, we had had conversations where very much if you know me or you listen to me on the radio or you listen to this podcast, you know that I'm I'm the girl who's going to like stay out until everyone leaves. I, I'm an, I'm the last person at every party. Like I like a good time. I'm also really good at chilling out, but I'm I FOMO like I want to be around different stuff. And he was very much more of a homebody, which is fine. So I just like in hindsight, I don't it probably wouldn't have worked long term. We had fun. We had great couple dates and that was that so if you hear me talk about suit guy that's him and this was another example of how I have the best friends in the whole world because him and I were not even dating I guess like we only went out a couple times but I was really bummed when I got that text and I think I was like talking to my friends Sue and Nicole at the time and I told them they showed up 10 minutes later with flowers and wine and they came over and we drank and it was I just have the best friends so I just want to say thank you to them for that again because truly we'll never forget it and it wasn't even for someone I was dating like that's why my friends are so cool you know it wasn't even a long-term it wasn't even a relationship to begin with so anyway they're the best so suit guy I need to go I need to like look at a list of men that I have dated all right so there are a couple people on the list I mean by a couple I mean a lot that I'm not even going to talk about um because I just feel like it I don't know. Like, I don't think I'll ever talk about them. Some of the nicknames are also inappropriate, and I definitely do not want to be talking about it on this podcast. So we'll skip over some guys. Um, Then we have, I'm only bringing this up because I know that I was just with him this morning and I will have him on the podcast. Let's just say you girl is into sliding into DMs, and I slid into this guy's DMs. We called him 23-year-old at the time. This That was his nickname. And uh, we talked for like, A little bit. I don't know. And then I invited him to go golfing. So then we went golfing and then we just became really good friends. I mean, him and I got dinner last night, went for a walk for coffee this morning. His real name is Nate. I told him this morning on our walk that I wouldn't call him by his nickname. But if you ever hear like if any of my friends say 23 year old, that is who we're talking about, Nate. So he uh, he is the best. We had a good time golfing. He actually we love telling the story that when it was like the end of so we went golfing after work we were on the last hole and it was starting to get dark and he was like I'm not even gonna putt like I can't even see whatever I was like well I'm still going to so I went up there the freaking sprinklers go off on me it's like the sun is setting it's barely there's barely any light the freaking sprinklers go off on me so I start running to the golf cart and then instead of driving away from the water he turns the golf cart and puts me back in the water so we like to laugh about that but good old 23 year old Nate Good guy. Then we meet a couple months later. Um, I think we call him Tattoo Guy. And good God, he's probably listening to this. Uh, we name him Tattoo Guy. Met him in the wild. I like to say that when I don't meet a man on a dating app. I met him at a bar for a Packer game. And we were like with a group of people. Obviously, I thought he was very attractive. And we just kind of talked. And then we both left at the same time but not together and um then I like got home and I checked my Instagram and he had followed me and then sent me a message asking if I would like to go grab one more drink somewhere else which I don't know like why to this day he didn't just ask me in person face to face was probably nervous I don't know but I was already home so I was like oh sorry but you know we can get a drink soon you know I was I think it was a Thursday night and I was busy I was out of town that weekend so we planned to get drinks the next week and we did and and um, got a couple of drinks. We went to two different places. Like conversation, he's a really nice dude. So we had like a conversation, whatever. We, I mean, he made it very clear in our conversation when we got drinks that night that he wasn't sure like what, he wasn't out actively seeking a relationship. <laughs> Again, I'm telling you it's comical. The amount, like I think every man says that um, because he had just gone through something, whatever. So I didn't have, you know, this like need to change this man or hope that he changes his mind like it was just we're having fun but it was a couple days later that I was with some friends and one of my friends um who's a guy was like scrolling through his Instagram feed and I was sitting next to him so I'm like watching him scroll and all of a sudden I see a picture of this tattoo man with another girl and I'm like wait what and I was like scroll back to that what is that and it was him with this girl and she had posted multiple pictures of them so I'm like what in the heck is going on so I send tattoo man a snapchat 
picture of that picture. And I'm like, uh, what's going on? And basically he said, like, I told, you know, her the same thing I told you that I'm not looking for fun. Like, she's really awesome, blah, blah, blah. But like, I just don't know if I'm ready. And I basically was like, okay, that's confusing, but whatever. So we never went out again after that. I still see him all the time. Like I still talk to him here and there. No bad blood, but it was just a very funny. I'm like, literally only in my life would that happen like it's crazy anyway they're dating now so congrats to them beautiful couple why does this always happen now that I'm talking about it I'm like this is actually really funny oh my god so who else do we have from last year this is all last year by the way we're getting into fall ish of last year uh we went out with high v guy who was um, the manager of High V? It was like when it was just opening. I think I met him on a dating app. We went to Hinterland, was not a match. He actually, on the date, you guys, like when I tell you, I literally, I've never wanted to leave a date before, but I was like, I need to get the heck out of here. He was really nice, but he was just odd. And he, at one point, like asked if he could feel my hair because I play with my hair, I guess. And he was just like, your hair looks so soft. Like, can I feel your hair? I'm like, that's weird. He did that. He asked me if my eyelashes were real. <laughs> which I'm like, no, they're not. But that's a weird question to ask. And then at one point during the date, he just like point blank was like, so like, how are you still single? And I just think that's a very odd question to ask on a first date. Like, I don't know, dude. How are you? I, I didn't like that. So anyway, I never saw him again. I don't even think he runs the store anymore. Great store, though. But um, yeah, so that was Ivy guy. Cedarburg guy went out with him like three or four times. Um, that didn't work out because he lives in Cedarburg and he has children. So like, I'm not going to move there. He's not going to move here because he has kids. So just didn't work out. Still talk to him every once in a while. Um, 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 um uh, I feel like there's no one else of significance. Anyone who has like nicknames anyway. Oh, this is a funny story. Actually, this is just like another reason I hate dating apps. So I started, I matched with this dude. We called him UPS guy. He's a UPS driver. And we actually had like really good conversation I mean we would talk like all day seemed like a fun dude and then we had plans to go out so he lived in like the Sheboygan area and he was going to come here on like a Friday we had plans to go to get tacos and margaritas and so or no this was on a Saturday because I think I texted him that morning yeah it was a weekend Saturday morning we were texting and I was like oh you know what time tonight if you want to just leave your car here like or pick me up or we can meet there, whatever. He was like, yeah, perfect. Still on. Um, I just left brunch with the boys, but can be there like whatever. And so then I think I responded or that's when I responded and said, the, well, do you want to meet there? Or do you want to whatever? And he never responded. He never responded. And I'm not going to go and like, if this is what you're doing in the beginning, I do not want to date you in the long run anyway. But I was flabbergasted. I was just like, what? And I'm not about to message him again and be like, what's going on? Why aren't you responding? So I didn't. And we, I ran into him. Um, but just a wild thing. I deleted him on like everything. I think we're still friends on Instagram, but I deleted him on Snapchat. I was like, I don't need this man seeing what I'm doing. But then I ran into him. I saw him at a Packer game at one of the bars after the game. And I feel like he, we like saw each other. And I think he fully panicked when he saw me or he was just drunk. I don't know, but it was super awkward. And then he responded to an Instagram story of mine a couple weeks ago, which was very weird. So anyway, that was UPS guy. Um, All right. So now we are in to 2023 and I am only going to tell you about two men maybe three I'll tell you about three men from this year and um the first one we called him pink flamingo guy so I met him last year at the pink flamingo which is a men's slow pitch softball tournament in De Pere. my family started it years ago so it's a whole to do we spend the whole weekend at the park it's so much fun anyway I met this guy there last year and Met him at a bar. We like invited him up to my friend's rooftop and whatever. I like thought he was super cute and him and I were talking most of the night. So then I knew someone who knew who his friends were. So I like asked around, figured out who he was, followed him on Instagram. Then we like started talking and but not really talking. I mean, I guess like I tried putting the ball in his core like I reached out to him and then I was like well if he's interested then he'll make something happen but we just kind of like would randomly talk here and there and then didn't talk to him for months and then on New Year's Eve I get like a DM from him that was asking me what I was doing on New Year's Eve it was probably like nine o'clock on New Year's Eve and I was like well that's kind of random because we don't really 
you know, ask what each other are doing, whatevs. So then we randomly would talk here and there. I like asked him for his number. And then I think I kept having to like make the move, I guess. So then in February, whenever Kelsey Ballerini was, that was like the week. I don't know. I think maybe in February, we finally got together for drinks and because we had been, I don't know, we had been talking about getting together and I was like, well, we should get drinks. And then I was like, do you like beer? Like there's a bunch of different breweries. We can go try this brewery. So that's what we did. And it was very easily could have a conversation with him. It was not awkward at all. We like had some beers. We played card games and I very much enjoyed it. I was like, oh, like I like, like, I mean, granted first date, I'm not falling in love, but I'm like, oh, like I really like this guy. And it seems like he has really good friends and that he actually has fun and that he like goes out and like is social, which is something that I am looking for. And I'm like, I feel like my friends would like him, which is another thing that's important to me, whatever. So I was under the impression that it was like a good time. And then his friends were all at a different bar. So then we left there and went and met up with his friends, had a good time with his friends that night, like stayed out. I left, like they were all still there when I left. He like walked me in my car, hugged, whatever, said we should do this again. And like, I very much had fun and I loved his friends. So then I texted him that night and I was like, I know, I like, I don't know if this is cringe or this is like embarrassing to say so soon that I had a really good time, but like, I had a really good time with you tonight. And he said the same, whatever. So I was like, we should do it again soon. He was like, for sure. But then I guess like I kept trying to put the ball in his court again. And then like a week or two went by, we didn't see each other, but then we made plans to meet up one night for drinks again. And then his friends were all out for like this band or something. So then we met his friends out and then we had like a super fun night. We stayed out all night. Things transpired, whatever. I thought things were like, I was under the impression that it was like more than a friend's situation and I think any other person would as well but um long story short then I didn't hear from him for a couple of days and then I was very confused and I was like what's going on you know like what's the haps then he says this was like I have the stomach flu while all of this is going on and he pulls the like oh like I thought we were just having fun like I didn't know that's what you were looking for and I'm like you're full of crap obviously that's what you know I was looking for but I guess men are just dumb um nothing against him he's whatever but But then I was very much like, okay, well, I'm going to put the kibosh on this. And then he was like bummed by that because he's like, well, I'd like still want you in my life. And I'm like, well, I can't do that because we're not on the same page, whatever. So we didn't talk for a couple months. But then, I mean, when I like I love his friends at this point. And so I'm like, well, I still want to hang out with his friends. So I did because they're amazing. And this is my in hindsight of this situation is that like I was meant to become friends with his friends. Um, They're literally the best I love them so much so him and I didn't talk for a couple of months and then I got drunk one night and accidentally reached out to him you know how it goes and we like talked again for a minute blah 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 I did not make a big deal of it I was like very much at this point knew what to expect so I definitely didn't make a big deal of it like I was just like trying to be friendly at this point and there were a couple moments that I like lost my cool, I guess a little bit, like when I saw him flirting with other girls in front of me and I just didn't love that, but I didn't yell at him for it. Like I just walked away. I just, you know, whatever. I'm a girl. I'm a human. What do you want from me? So then things are fine for months, you know, running in the same circle, whatever. Things are all well. And then something came up where he said a not so great comment about me to one of my best friends and it came back to me. I didn't even make a big deal of it. Then like a month after that happened, I don't even know what happened. It was just a whole to do. And then he lost his mind on me being like that I was reading the room wrong and that he's sick of hearing about it and blah, blah, blah. So we have not spoken a single word since then. It was, I got it, you know, the, the texts he sent me were not nice. They were pretty insane and they really hurt my feelings a lot. And I cried in the bathroom at work and then I haven't talked to him since or seen him. So that's being flamingo guy. I'm telling you my dating life is a mess and I don't want this podcast to go on for 10 hours. So if you hear my friends at this point I guess you know they they very much don't like him so if you hear Pink Flamingo guy that's who that is um and then we have Keel guy which is not the best nickname I will admit I guess it's not like the most way to hide a name I guess I don't know what I'm trying to say but anyway so 
Then after Pink Flamingo Guy, I very much wasn't actively like I didn't go out with anyone. I was just like, oof, like I need a break from that. So then this was in like May that it was right after I got back from Nash, kind of. It was like a month after I got back from Nashville. And we met up with this dude in Nashville who this Keel guy was friends with. So he saw something I posted about him and I went into my message requests on Instagram and he had like responded to something. So I'm like, oh, like who is this guy? Um, Because I hadn't followed him back because I didn't know who he was and his page was private. So I like look him up. I'm like, oh, like he seems cute and normal, blah, blah, blah. So him and I start talking after he slid into the DMs. Then he asked me out. So then And we went out um, on our first date in May and I mean, talked every day, went to Ledgestone, which, you know, is my number one date spot. We had a really good time. The date lasted a really long time. Once again, I think we were the only people left. And once again, I ended with a smooch. I need to chill out with that. But I left the date. Keep in mind, I was pretty guarded already at this point. Like I was just ready. I'm always ready for the shoe to drop. So I just like never fully trust the situation. But I'm like, okay, you know, we had a really good time. Like I definitely knew that we had different lifestyles that we didn't necessarily enjoy a lot of the same stuff. And I like said that to my friends. I was like, I just like don't know. And they were like, Hannah, you're being insane. Like you're always looking for something wrong so you can't get hurt. Like just give it a try. I'm like, okay, I'm being crazy, whatever. So then we went out again a couple days later and then we ended up like seeing each other for a couple months this summer, like going on dates, spending nights at each other's places, very much dating or so I thought. Here we go. You know where this is going, right? So everything was fine. We talked like all day, every day, would hang out, you know, blah, blah, blah. It was 4th of July weekend, I want to say, that um, I spent the night at his place. But then like the there was another issue where I would ask him to come and like hang out with my friends and I. And he, like I said before, we were very different. And like, I'm a very social person and he has friends, like he has a social life, whatever. But he was just like, he would like get nervous about like being around all of the people that I'm with, which I get. I mean, it's a, it's a taunting thing. I have a lot of friends, so I get it, but I just felt like he never would. And so I'm like, was trying not to look too far into it. But then I asked him to come with us Like I spent the night there and then I asked him to come up to Door County with us. And then he like texted me the morning of saying he couldn't make it. And then I just, I shut down at that point. Even if there wasn't anything going on, I shut down because I'm like, I'm so used to knowing the signs. So I'm like, well, here we go. Here we go again. So I like didn't talk to him the rest of the day. I was kind of, I was just bummed because I just had a feeling. So we still talked I guess like the next couple of days I didn't talk to him that day but then it was like a couple nights later we were texting about something else and then finally I'm like I'm just gonna say something so then I pulled the like what is going on here you know I don't know if you're just busy because he's a coach I'm like I don't know I know that your season is starting and that you know are you just busy with that am I looking into this blah 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 and then the text came Yep, you know the one the uh, I'm not ready for relationship one there we have it happened again um, after two months Uh, you know after he he started the whole thing so that's fun and he's a really good guy again I'm not out here like bashing these guys but I mean I felt really crummy about it I'm not gonna lie because from the beginning I had reservations and I let myself go there then and then I mean I was still like hanging out with someone else at the time this Keel and I started hanging out blah 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 I like stopped hanging out with that person because I then realized like, oh, like this could be something, you know, I do like him. And then I, you know, then my guard went right back up. Uh, So that one was definitely a what the heck moment. And it was a real bummer. Um, And he's another guy who, if he's listening Again, don't think you're a bad guy, but you're full of crap because I know that you're in a relationship now. And I'm pretty sure started this relationship like right after. At least that's what I think in my mind. So another burnt pancake situation. But that was the moment that I had my I need a break from this because I felt so bad. Like I felt like garbage where I was like, here we go again. You know, I'm the one who had reservations about this, but then I let my guards down. I let it happen because I'm like, maybe, you know, I'm being crazy and I'll 
whatever. And then it still ended up biting me in the butt. And so I needed a break after that. I was like, I don't want to go through this again anytime soon. And then at one point he said in our conversation that he uh, wasn't sure what my intentions were. And I was like, are you nuts? I'm like, what do you think my intentions are? We've been hanging out for two months. We've been going on like dates. Like what? What do you mean? So I don't know. I'm fully convinced that because he's so nice. He's such a nice person. I'm not saying that he's not, but... I think that was just his way of like trying to end things with me and be nice. But at the end of the day, it like no matter what, it still really hurt. So that is the last person that I like went on multiple dates with this year. Um, After that, I was like, I don't want to go on dates. Then I went on kind of a little bit of a crazy girl streak. I will be fully transparent and say that I had a slutty girl summer. I told all my friends that. I was like, I'm just going to have fun. And I did. I had a lot of fun. But starting Q1 2024, I'm going to take my life down. But I definitely just went into the rest of the year as like, I'm just going to have fun. I'm not going to look too much into like anything. I did go on some dates with some guys that were great guys. They just weren't the guys for me. And here we are. Now it's December of 2023. And I'm in a much better headspace. I will say, though, Keel Guy did go public with his new relationship on Christmas, and I did see that on Facebook, and I had a uh, slight moment of my heart in my butthole, but, you know, we're, we're past it. Everything happens for a reason. 2024 will be a new year turning a new page but I am gonna say if I get one more goddamn text from someone pulling that line, I am going to burn all of Wisconsin down, so... Uh, there we have it. I was very vulnerable in this episode. I really let you in on all of the ins and outs of your girl's dating life in the last year and a half, two years. Um, you know, so there were people I left out. I don't know. There might be guys listening to this that I actually went out with a couple times and they're probably like, why, do, why is she talking about me? I'm really only talking about the people that I know might come up when I have people who are in my life on the podcast, when we talk about different dating stories. And I know that a lot of girls, a lot of girls sadly have gone through these exact same situations. So just know I'm here for you, sister. Do not let it get you down. I know that's easier said than done, uh, but do not let a situationship, a man, a woman, whoever determine your self-worth because you're amazing. And you just have to remind yourself of all of the amazing, epic, awesome things that you have going on in your life and that you will make someone very happy one day and that your perfect person is out there somewhere. This is just me pretty much giving myself that pep talk. So um, just know I feel you. I, you know, social media is fake. I have a lot of people who reach out to me and or like, I mean, I guess I see people too. And I just think that like every, they have everything going for them in their life. And I remember I was even on one of my dates with cute guy. Oh, I do want to talk about a cute date situation that we had. But I think I had told him that, that I'm like not confident in myself or that I definitely have moments where I like don't feel secure in myself or that like if I walk into a room of people that I don't know I get like really freaked out and I get scared and he was like shocked by that so just know that social media is not you know it's a highlight reel and I know you know that but I definitely have a lot of insecurities and I definitely have had a lot of ups and downs this year of like trying to figure that out so just know that I definitely feel those things too so I just want you to know that but I did want to say after I just bashed him I didn't bash him but I told the truth so I guess that's not bashing but I did want to say there was one very cute oh we we did call him a taco guy taco and Taylor Swift guy too because there was one night I went over there we made tacos and he like the sunset was so pretty in his backyard and so we would always eat like food out there and we made tacos and ate them in his backyard with the sun setting and he played Taylor Swift because it was like right before I went to the Taylor Swift concert and it was very iconic so you know great guy his new girlfriend he lied to me about being ready for a relationship for is very lucky I'm sure that he does very nice stuff for her so I just needed to end on being nice after that I am so mortified knowing that these men I'm talking about could be listening to this I'm not gonna lie like I think that's why I haven't done this podcast in so long because I'm truly terrified of that so just know guys that I'm like not loving this either okay so there you have it first episode back caffeinated and confused we have an all new um image for the podcast we've got a new intro as I'm sure you might have heard 
and a new it's a new era of caffeinated and confused i'm going to do my best to have a weekly episode we're going to drop an episode every thursday i am going to have my good friend amariah on for the first podcast of 2023 we are going to do a pit and peak recap of the year so we're going to talk about the pits and peaks of our year we're going to talk about the pits and peaks of pop culture you'll get to know her a little bit and uh, it's going to be fun i'm going to have different people in my life on every single week so i'm excited for you to get to know them i'm excited for you to hear the episodes and to bring you along on my 2024 journey because you just heard about my journey over the last year and a half and that was only you know 15 percent of it so we're going to be on this ride together and again thank you for caring i mean i feel super freaking awkward putting my life out there like this and i worry way too much about what other people think like i'm sitting here being like oh my god people are gonna be like i can't believe why is she on there talking about her dating life like people care blah 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 trust me i have just as many insecurities about it and I feel very weird about it but um, it's also kind of therapeutic and I get messages quite literally every single day asking me when I'm bringing the podcast back so here you have it I'm putting myself out there for you so if I never get a date again because of this it's because of you caffeinated listeners so thank you new episode going to be coming out next Thursday with Amariah so get ready for it and have a great new year's have so much fun Uh, I hope that you ring it in with all the people you love, or I hope you go to bed and don't even ring it in. That's cool too. So um, I will talk to you in the new year. See you next year. (laughs) Ha ha.